Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome if this is your first time to the Curatorially Yours channel uh, and welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. Uh, today I am sharing with you my epic fail <laughs> at doing a no book buying in November situation. Uh, I will admit at the beginning of the month it really did slow me down because there were things popping up, you know, books recommended by people that I immediately wanted to go and buy, but I stopped myself. I was like, no, this is no by November. We're not going to be buying any books. Um, and then, <laughs> okay, then um, there was a situation um, where I needed to uh, treat myself and I did that by buying some books. <laughs> And then I just really like secondhand book shopping. Um, so I popped into a, a secondhand shop because I had a little bit of time um, and I bought a book. And then it happened again today. Um, so, yeah. I have, like, not even just a little bit failed No Buy November. I have, like, properly, properly failed no buy book no buying of books in november <laughs> so i'm going to show you what i bought i'm not ashamed of that it's okay i'm fine with it it's fine i love books i love collecting them i love shopping for them i'm happy to have them so there's no like we're not going to be mad at me um it's been a rough month <laughs> We'll try a no buy month another time. Okay, let's get into the book. I've already been filming for two minutes and I haven't shown you a single book. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the books that don't count um, towards my total because either they were free or they were books that I had ordered a while ago and they just don't happen to arrive in November. So those don't count. I did not buy those in November. All right, so first let me show you those. The first one is and Every Morning, The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Backman. I know Frederick Backman is a very, very popular um, author here on BookTube. Um, I have never read any Frederick Backman, and this is a very short one. It's a novella, um, and I really don't know what it's about other than I think it's probably sad, like a bit sad. Um if memory serves, this is about a, ma a man, like a grandfather who is um, has dementia or something similar to that. He's losing memory, I believe. And then he is, um, yeah, that sort of evolved, that situation is evolving over time. And he's sort of spending time with his grandson on this bench. That could be completely wrong. That's just my memory of what goes on in this book. So if you know better than I do about what this is about, please let me know down in the comments. Um, but I am looking forward to reading this one. It's nice and short, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, and hopefully it will be an enjoyable read. The other book that I had pre-ordered that arrived in November is Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. Um, this one is interesting. So I specifically ordered this one because I loved the cover of this particular edition. So it just took a little while to get to me. Um, but this one is about um, Chopin, as in the musician, the um, piano composer extraordinaire. Um, and George Sand uh, and her children travel to this monastery in Mallorca, Mallorca, sorry. And they, uh, and then I believe there's some kind of ghost that is living in this mansion um, sorry, this monastery where they are and sort of it's kind of gets a bit messy. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I've been looking forward to this for some time and it's going to take a lot of willpower not to pick it up before the end of the year. Um, so this will probably be a book that I read early next year. Um, but yeah, very much looking forward to this one. Then the two books that I got for free. Um, so one of them I got in a little free library and it is stories from the Australian movement. Um, so it's hashtag me too. Um, and this is some uh, short form essays, I believe, um, that are, and sometimes interviews 
from the looks of things, um, where a collection of Australian um, women are talking about what happened to them, telling their story um, as part of the, you know, hashtag me too movement um, from a few years ago. So this was free. It's in really great condition. I'm really glad to get that because that would be, I might sort of dip into this one as opposed to sort of sitting and reading it in one go. Although you never know, like when you start these things, sometimes you just kind of want to keep going. So that's that one. Uh, this is one that I picked up today <laughs> for free. So there is a, um, uh, sorry, it is Constant Woo's Making a Constant Woo. Oh my goodness. I can't speak today. This is Making a Scene by Constance Wu. And I picked this up today for free. Um, so not too far away from where I live, there is a book publisher um, uh, and they have a shelf outside their office um, that we discovered where they give away books for free. <laughs> um, prior to COVID, we used to get like a whole shopping bag full of books. Nowadays, you go there and there's sometimes stuff there and there sometimes isn't stuff there. But I just popped in on the off chance today and this book was there. Uh, and it's one that I had heard about and was interested in reading. Um, this is, I believe, about... Uh, so this is a memoir in essays about her life um, and fame and uh, I believe also um, sort of touching on being cancelled um, because that was something that happened to her. So um, I'm interested, I had heard about this already, so it was just sitting there and it was for free. So I grabbed it. It's an arc, um, but it's, you know, this book has been out for a while. It came out in April. So um, yeah. Anyway, it's a this year publication, so I'm happy to get that for free. Okay, so those were the four that don't count <laughs> in terms of adding to my numbers for No Buy in November where I've epically failed. Uh, these are the ones that do. <laughs> okay, another memoir um, that I picked up this month um, is Grace Tame's memoir, The Ninth Life of a Diamond Miner. Uh, Grace Tame is an Australian woman um, who is a uh, sexual abuse uh, survivor um, and she has become an advocate in terms of um, trying to change state laws here in Australia, um, changing the wording of those laws uh, to remove uh, any reference to a... So she was a minor when this happened to her um, and in the law um, it... In some states of Australia, it says it calls it a an adult minor relationship. So she has been advocating to get those laws changed to remove the word relationship, because as we know, um, engaging in uh, sex with a minor, that's not a relationship. There is an, a power imbalance there if you are not a minor. Um, so this is, yeah, anyway, she, she's a very, very powerful advocate um, who has spoken out about her uh, with her story. She had, you know, some really interesting sort of things happen to her because she was, I believe, Australian of the Year, um, or one of the people, one of the people who was Australian of the Year. Um, and her time uh, being, having that role and what she used that platform for. Um, but also following that role, you know, she has remained sort of in the public consciousness, if you will. Um, so anyway, I'm very interested to read all about her life um, and to get to this memoir at some point very soon because she is a very interesting person um, who has, despite the fact that she's quite young, has lived a very interesting life. So I'm keen to read this one. Uh, at the same time, so this is the reason that I ended up buying this one. This was like a because I'm ordering something else, oh, yes, I would also like to read that, that I'll order that as well. And the book that I was ordering, which you may have already seen, is um, Accidentally Kelly Street, uh, which is uh, by Bryony Stewart. So the lyrics are by Tim O'Connor from Frente. Now, when I was growing up, um, Frente was one of my favourite bands and this was the song that got me into it, Accidentally Kelly Street, because it's got my name in the title, right? Also, it's like 
really upbeat and like wholesome and I was I don't know 10 um <laughs> so like it it was a very formative um part of my um my childhood this song and uh Frente's next album after the Marvin the album that this song was on um was the first album that I paid money my own money for um so yeah I love Frente and I love this song and I was so excited that it was being turned into a picture book um and I if you follow me over on Instagram um my links are below if you're interested um I you will have seen me already share <laughs> the day that this arrived I was super excited about it because um it's beautiful and Bryony Stewart has done such a brilliant job of turning this song into something new. So she's really um, taken the the material that she's working with and her illustrations have turned this into to being a song or story about a family who are escaping um, violence in another country, making a new home in Kelly Street, um, and how the community welcomes them and it's so beautiful it's absolutely beautiful um so if you are a frente lover or even if you're not and you just love beautiful picture books that have a beautiful message um then you will love this book um as much as i do i'm sure <laughs> so highly recommended um normally i don't do recommendations in my um in my haul videos but this is an exception because I have already read it. I read it the day it arrived. <laughs> so exciting. Um, so that's why I bought the Grace Tame book because I had bought that picture book. Okay, then we come to <laughs> the two books I bought for myself on the day that I needed to treat myself. Um, I won't talk about why it's health related stuff, but it was literally doctor's orders for me to treat myself. So I did. I stopped in at a bookstop, bookshop on the way home from the from the doctors and I bought two books. Um, this one is Nothing Bad Ever Happens Here by Heather Rose, a memoir of loss and discovery. Um, Heather Rose wrote one of my uh, favourite books of a couple of years ago that I read called um, The Museum of Modern Love. This year I read her other book, Bruni. Um, I didn't like that as much as I liked the Museum of Modern Love, but I do like her as a writer. So I was, I didn't know that this existed and it came into my consciousness um, a few weeks ago, I would say. Um, so yeah, I, when I saw it at the bookshop, I was like, yep, that's the one I would like to buy for myself today. So Heather Rose's Nothing Bad Ever Happens Here. Um, this is her, just a personal memoir. So even though she is an author, um, this is like her kind of life stuff. Um, it's not about necessarily being an author. It's just about human stuff. So yeah, keen to get to that. Uh, uh, quite a few, quite a few mem memoirs this um, month. And I have, would have to say memoirs is a genre that I, I don't, I haven't historically read a lot of. Um, and I think it's something I'm starting to get into now, um, which is interesting uh, because it wasn't, something that was particularly on my radar before I tended to avoid memoirs to be honest um but yeah I, maybe it's because I'm getting old I don't know anyway that's what I've bought the other book that I bought um is uh Mouse uh which we've all heard of I'm sure by Art Spiegelman um the the very famously banned book that everybody um needs to read. So I am very keen to get to this. When I got it home, my husband was like, oh, I already have Mouse. Um, I was like, okay, well, now I've also got it. Uh, but this is the complete Mouse. So this is um, one and two, I believe, um, in one volume. So I'm looking forward to reading that um, and getting on board with um, what everyone's been talking about um, with this book. Then... <laughs> <laughs> then we have two more books that I bought um, and these literally arrived yesterday. Um, this was the fault of Black Friday sales um, and these were good prices and I was like, oh, I really do kind of. Um, so the main one that I got because it was like 50% off, so it was a good price, was uh, Madly Deeply, The Alan Rickman Diaries. Again, 
again with the well I guess this is not technically a memoir but it is non-fiction writing by it's autobiographical because it's his diaries um I have been obviously hearing all about this book and I'm very very keen to read it I love Alan Rickman um a big fan of his work um and yeah I'm looking forward to kind of reading insights into sort of like his life and his opinions of the people that he's been working with and you know just sort of those back behind the scenes type of things um with his life so yeah very keen to get to this one too so this was the main reason that I was buying books for Black Friday and then um just because it was a decent price again and because I love these little collector's editions and if you've watched my um classics video about collecting classics uh you will know that this is um these are more I would say shelf collection type of books as opposed to the one you want to read it out of um but they are quite beautiful so these are the macmillan uh what are they called the macmillan collector's library yeah macmillan collector's library and this is burmese days by george orwell um, i'm currently reading a george orwell book down and out in paris and london um and yeah this one popped up uh and it was a decent price so and i have a collection of these already of the Macmillan Collector's Library so I was like yeah I'll buy it <laughs> so those were the two that I that I bought um, from the Black Friday sales okay now we get on to secondhand books I don't feel quite as no we're not going to be feel I'm not feeling guilty about buying these books that I bought new um, and but I especially don't feel guilty about secondhand books that I have picked up um, this month, even though I wasn't supposed to. Um, so the first one that I picked up was um, I happened to be uh, driving by a secondhand store, a Vinnie's, um, and it was open and I'm not normally at there in the vicinity times that it's open I've only ever been to this Finney's once before but I knew that it had a good book section so I popped in and I found a copy of The Leviathan uh, by Rosie Andrews I actually don't know anything about this story but on the back it says she is awake um, and I know of the Leviathan in the Bible um, so yeah I'm interested to sort of know how this um how this kind of goes it looks like it could be witchy and it also looks like it could be a bit of a mystery sort of situation something happens maybe somebody dies in mysterious circumstances um so yeah interesting and it's set in norfolk 1643 so historical fiction love it love the idea love the cover um and will be very excited to read this one hopefully next year now, the rest of these books I picked up today. <laughs> and this was, I was uh, going to pick up something else that was not a book that I bought from somebody on Facebook Marketplace. And en route to their house, I went past a secondhand store, again, another one that I've only been to once before, that I also knew had a really good book section that often has. Like last time I went there, I bought a ton of books. Um, because they just had heaps and heaps of good stuff. So I was like, hmm, I've got some time. <laughs> so I popped in and, of course, bought some books. Um, I did buy some other books that I'm not going to show you because they're just uh, physical copies of books I have read um, already, but I didn't own the physical copy of. So I bought a couple of things to sort of add to my library of, um, you know, books that I um that are going to be on my shelf to my collection but they are books I've already read so I'm not going to haul them here um so one of them is this gorgeous edition of Anne of Green Gables now I know it's um a shock and my one of my really good friends Sophie this is her favorite childhood book and I apologize Sophie I have never read it um but anyway I found this beautiful edition um it's a naked hardback um and it looks like it was the it was an edition that came out a hundred years um, after the original publication might would be my guess um, and it's just beautiful so uh, it's not in the best condition it's definitely got some foxing I don't know if you can see that um, in the spine um, but 
it's still in a distinctly readable condition. So uh, yeah, I'll be very excited to get to this eventually. I do already own a copy of Anne of Green Gables, but um, yeah, I just couldn't go past this one because it was so nice. <laughs> um, and then I picked up some fiction. So I have uh, this one, which is Barbed Wire and Cherry Blossoms by Anita Heiss. I think is how you pronounce her surname. Apologies if it's not. Um, so Anita Heiss is a um, an Aboriginal Australian author. Um, this is uh, some of her fiction work. She also has written some nonfiction. I've never read her before, um, so I am looking forward to getting to this one. Uh, but this is a historical fiction, and it's set in Australia, um, and I had already uh, heard about this book. I don't think it was published that recently but let me just confirm that oh my goodness it's signed <laughs> there you go um it's a pity my name's not diane <laughs> uh okay let me have a look 2016 so this came out a little while ago now um and she has written and uh, published more books since then um but this is a a historical fiction set in 1944 this is a um there was a japanese prisoner of war camp in uh, uh near the country town of kaura and uh there was an a breakout um from there from the compound um lots of people lots of those prisoners of war were killed um a lot were recaptured and some of them took their own lives um and and so on but this is a story of one of the soldiers called Hiroshi. I'm assuming this is a fictional um, person, but Hiroshi manages to escape and is um, he escapes to a place called Erambi Station, which is an Aboriginal mission, um, and they decide to help him um, because they don't have distrust like some of the um, the white folk of the area. Um, so. Yeah, they offer him ref refuge, and then I believe there's a um, he begins a relationship with one of the women, um, the daughter of sort of like the this uh, the kind of an elder or you know somebody who is a, a you know a leader from of his community. Um, so yeah, it's it's this story of um, this escaped prisoner who um, ends up. In a relationship with an Aboriginal woman. So this should be an interesting book um, and I will hopefully get to it at some point but I was excited to see it um, because she is an author that I would definitely like to read. Um, the other fiction book that I picked up um, that I did not have already <laughs> was Unsheltered by Claire Maletta and I know that this is a book that has had a lot of um there's been a lot of talk about it I believe it was published last year yeah 2021 and I don't know much about the story I just recognized the cover um and thought I'd pick it up because it was a very good price so we'll find out more about that when I get to it the last book that I picked up is also fiction, um, but it's more of a classic. Um, now, a few months ago, yeah, it would definitely have been a few months ago, I did, um, I don't often do tag videos, but I did a tag video where I was talking, it would have been halfway through the year, actually. I was talking about um, uh, sort of where I wanted to get to by the end of this year. And one of the prompts in that was best uh your favorite book to to film slash tv um uh adaptation that you've seen this year and the only thing that i could think of was um lark rise to candleford where I, I basically binge watched the entirety all four seasons of it when i got covid so that was in may <laughs> um so yeah i binge watched lark rise to candleford but I'd never read the book and I didn't own it. And then today I found it um, and it's an illustrated copy of it. So it's the illustrated Lark Rise to Counterfoot by Flora Thompson. Um, so yeah, it will be exciting to get to this at some point um, and or just to have a little peruse. I did have a quick flick um, through and it does have these sort of lovely um, 
color illustrations throughout. Um, so yeah, it should be um, quite nice. So it's got these kind of full page plates and also some kind of like little illustrations as well. So yeah, uh, that will be an exciting book to get to as well. I'm not going to attempt to pick up this stack, but that's it. Those are the books that I've acquired in November. It's not even the end of November yet, so there's still time. Um, but I think we've given up all hope of this being a no, no by November because it's already, it's too late. <laughs> that ship has sailed. Um, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, and I liked the idea of doing a no buy month, so maybe we'll revisit that um, sometime soon. Probably December, I mean, touch wood, um, I don't think I will be buying too many books in December um, because, you know, normally it's not a good idea to do right before Christmas. And also my birthday is early in January, so I tend not to buy a lot of books um, unless I'm spending vouchers that I've been given for Christmas, for example. Um, so yeah, maybe December could be a no buy month. We'll see. We'll see how we go. <laughs> um, I will do my best. Uh, but if not, we'll see if we can do a month next, um, next year where I don't buy any books. Don't cross your fingers. <laughs> it's a, it's a habit. And it's a habit I'm okay with. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching me epically fail to uh, keep my promise to myself not to buy any books this month. Um, I'm really pleased with the books that I have acquired this month. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful stack. And I'm very excited to get to um, so many of these books next year. Uh, now, I'm going to give you a little teaser uh, for what's coming because I have had a think and I have an idea for what I'd like to run as a challenge next year. So this year I've been doing the Australian Reading Challenge. Um, that has been the challenge I've hosted over on the Storygraph. I have an idea for next year. So um, watch this space. Uh, I will be coming to you very soon with that idea and hopefully um, some of you will be interested in joining me on my challenge for 2023. All right, guys, I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.